Good morning, everyone, and thank you all for being with us. I'm Dr. Matthew Davis, the chair of the Department of Pediatrics and our chief of community health transformation here at Lurie Children's. It's my pleasure to welcome you all to Lurie Children's, where we are honored every day to work with partners like all of you to create a healthier future for every child and to make our communities safer for all children and families. At Lurie Children's, our one job is to ensure kids' optimal health. Certainly, we do this by providing world-class clinical care in our hospital and in our clinics, and also by conducting cutting-edge research. At the same time, we need to also help kids be healthy by protecting them in the communities where they live, learn, and play. We are gathered here this morning to raise awareness about the best safe sleep practices for parents and caregivers and to highlight recent laws and regulations aimed at creating a safer marketplace to keep all babies safe. This is an issue that is crucially important to us here at Lurie Children's. Earlier this year, Lurie Children's surveyed Chicago parents, excuse me, and found that a majority of Chicago parents of infants do not follow safe sleeping practices for their babies. This latest survey from the hospital's Voices of Child Health in Chicago brings cause for worry because these practices are putting a high number of babies here in our city at risk for injury and even death. The survey showed that 58% of Chicago infants are potentially unsafe while they are sleeping. But we can do something about this. Infant deaths are a tragedy and we need common sense prevention to help babies have safe sp spaces to breathe while they sleep. This is why all of us are here this morning with national leaders who are making certain that not only parents, but grandparents, babysitters, and other caregivers are aware of safe sleep practices. I wanna offer a warm welcome to two outstanding members of the Illinois Congressional Delegation who have joined us here today. We are privileged to have Congresswoman Jan Schakowsky with us. Congresswoman Schakowsky is a fierce advocate for children and adolescents. We've had a pleasure to have her with us at Lurie Children's for many years. Thank you for being here, Congresswoman Schakowsky. Thank you. We're also pleased to welcome Congresswoman Robin Kelly. Congresswoman Kelly has also joined us on many occasions to celebrate advances in children's safety and health and is deeply committed to improving the health and wellness of vulnerable communities across the country. Thank you, Congresswoman Kelly. We are incredibly fortunate here at Lurie Children's to have both Congresswoman Schakowsky and Congresswoman Kelly represent us in Washington, D.C., and we thank them for being staunch champions for children's health every day of the year. It is now my privilege to welcome and introduce the chair of the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission, Alexander Hohen Sark. Chairman Hohen Sark and his team have been working tirelessly to protect children and families across the nation from unreasonable risk of injury and death associated with the use of thousands of types of consumer products. We are honored to have you here today, Chair, and thank you for your leadership. I'm now going to turn over the podium to Chair Hohen Sark. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for... Uh, joining us today and is great to be here. It's great to be back in Chicago where I had the pleasure of living for a number of years. And I really wanna thank Dr. Davies and Lori Children's Hospital for hosting us here today. I can't think of a better venue to discuss children's health and safety than one of the preeminent children's hospitals in the world. I'm also so pleased to be joined by a host of champions for children, children's safety, to be able to celebrate the progress that the Consumer Product Safety Commission has been making over the last year is really due to, to them and their work that we've been able to do what we have done. You know, before I start, I do want to recognize um, you know, the, the people who will be speaking after me. First, uh, Representative Schakowsky, Representative Kelly, thank you so much for being such zealot advocates for consumer protection. I also have a star-studded lineup of folks who are gonna be speaking after me for advocacy in the medical profession. And we have Nancy Coles, Can Kids in Danger? We have Toreen Kreppi from Safe Kids Worldwide. We have Rachel Weintraub from Consumer, Consumer Federation of America, and Dr. Keelan Quinlan who is speaking on behalf of the American Academy of Pediatrics as well as Rush University. 
These really are rock stars who have been working to be able to protect children uh, from the hazards in their homes every day. You know, when I joined the CPSC a little over a year ago, you know, I said that I would make children's safety the priority for the agency, and particularly when it comes to consumer products uh, that are used by and for infants. You know, I believe then, as I believe now, that parents and caregivers have a right to expect that the products that they buy for their kids are safe, and that they have the information that they need to make smart, informed, and safe decisions about what they're gonna buy for their babies. I'm happy to say that over the last year, we made a lot of progress towards these goals. You know, this last year, we have started to enforce the infant sleep product rule, which was finalized in 2021, but went into effect in June. This is a rule that says that any products that are intended or marketed for uh, infants to sleep in must comply with one of our three mandatory standards with respect to either bassinets, cribs, or play yards. Since June, we've been sending out dozens and dozens of letters to manufacturers and retailers to remind them of their obligations under the rule and to take off any products that may be violative. And I'm happy to say that there, I know of at least 26 products that are no longer for sale, making the country a little safer for children. And as good as that is, um, rest assured, the CPSC is not going to rest on that. We're going to be proactive. We're going out there to make sure that people are complying with the law. I mean, just recently, we sent out a notice to company Docatot about one of their products that they imported that's violation of the infant sleep rule. You know, it's a, a lounger that is popular, but in the end of the day, it's just not safe for infants to sleep in. So I want to send that as a message to the rest of the industry as well. CPSC is taking these rules seriously. We're monitoring the marketplace. We're going to make sure that things are safe for families and babies across the nation. Another milestone this year was really the, the passage of the Safe <coughs> Sleep for Babies Act, which goes into effect in two days at this point in time. It is a law that bans the sale of padded crib bumpers as well as inclined sleep products for infants. You know, it is the people up here who know far too well of all the, the deaths that were associated with products. So let me be clear, this law will save babies' lives, and the CPSC will, starting on Saturday, take seriously going out there and enforcing this law. We're going to be monitoring the marketplace, both online and brick and mortar stores, and making sure people are complying with it. Representative Schakowsky, you were the, the moving force in getting this law passed through the House, and much thanks is owed to you. And you know, on the, the Senate side, Senator Duckworth has been a champion with respect to banning padded crib bumpers. I know her staff, uh, Jessica Sewell, is here to help celebrate the implementation of this law. And I appreciate her. And, and really, at the end of the day, you know, Representative Schakowsky and, and Senator Duckworth are owed a great deal of credit and thanks for getting this passed into law. Now, on top of all of that, as Dr. Davis is, is mentioning, the CPSC has been working on lots of other things, putting forward uh, mandatory safety rules for products that really are improving and making the home safer for children across America, whether it's been in respect to standards for magnets, standards for crib mattresses, standards for uh, clothing storage units, or standards for window blind coverings. These are all things that we've done in the past year, but we're not actually stopping there. Next year, we're gonna be putting in rules, implementing Reese's Law. Reese's Law is a vital piece of legislation that was championed by Representative Kelly that will protect infants from some of the hazards of button cell batteries. These are tiny little batteries that when they're swallowed by children can burn through their esophagus, causing traumatic injuries, and in some cases, even death. So you have my commitment that we are gonna move forward quickly to implement the, the legislation as fast as we can. So really the people up here have been champions over the decades for getting these rules put into place, as well as 
other standards and being strong supporters of the Consumer Product Safety Commission, which really I appreciate. And it's been a tremendous year. I mean, at the same time, I would be remiss not to note that the people who are doing all the work are the staff of the CPSC who work tirelessly day after day to make sure that American families are all that much safer with each day that they work. And it's really my honor to work with them as well as to be with our allies and friends in Congress and advocacy groups and with the medical profession to be able to move uh, safety forward. And I guess fi finally I would say that you know CPSC, as we're hitting into holidays, is making sure that we're putting out safety information about how to protect babies as people are considering buying gifts or going and, and organizing family gatherings. Because communications is extremely important to us as well, particularly when it comes to traditionally underserved communities. We're getting our message out there to hundreds of millions of eyeballs uh, largely through social media, but we recognize that we need to double down and go to people where they are and have them uh, be able to hear our messages in ways that will be effective. So from billboards to local radio, we are gonna be out there going after them. And I also encourage people to go to cpsc.gov to look at our safety information. And if you're looking to buy a product, go to saferproducts.gov where you can go do research and find out what other parents are saying about these products. And as importantly, if you've had a problem, a safety problem with the product, you can report it to the CPSC through saferproducts.gov. Please don't just write a bad review online. Come to us, let us know what the safety issue was. We will investigate it and you could be saving some other child's life. So with that, I really appreciate everybody being here, but it's my honor and privilege to ask Representative Schakowsky to come Give a few words. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so, thank you so much. Um, we can and will and are making our country safer for our children, for our babies. And I want to say a real hearty thank you um, to Chairman um, Hohen Sar uh, 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 Sarek. Oh, you know, I've never gotten that right. Uh, <laughs> Hohen Sarek, um, who is a, a, a real champion, has been, and um, we're so happy to have him as head of the Consumer Product Safety Commission. Um, I also um, want to give a huge shout out to Kids in Danger, um, who has done so much work, uh, along with parents, who um, to, to make our, our kids safer, um, the uh, Consumer Federation of America, Safe Kids Worldwide, um, the pediatricians, and also Lurie Children's Hospital for always welcoming us for occasions like, like this. Um, we are here today because of all of your hard work, and especially I want to do a shout out to some people who aren't here, and those are the parents parents who have stood up and brought to mind the kinds of tragedies and turned that tragedy into power to prevent other families from having to um, confront the tragedies that they have felt, and it's so appreciated. I know in my subcommittee, I chair the Subcommittee on Consumer Protection, we have over and over again had parents come and talk about the hazards that are out there um, to prevent those happening to, to, uh, to, to others. I also, um, I, 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 I want to um, thank uh, uh, my colleague, um, Congressman Tony Cardenas, who along with me um, introduced and passed the Safe Sleep for Babies Act, um, and that is going into uh, law in a couple, Saturday, two days, um, which I'm very happy, uh, happy about. Passed the House, passed the Senate. That means, of course, that we, uh, we did have bipartisan um, support. Families of uh, you know, all political stripes want to protect their, their, their children. Um, this bill bans these uh, dangerous products and will keep them off the, uh, off the shelves, out of the marketplace, um, and hopefully, 
out of the homes of all of the of all of our families. The Safe um, Sleep Act for the Safe Sleep for Babies Act um, was uh, you know passed last year in the Senate, passed then this year in the uh, I mean in the House and then in the Senate, as I say, going into effect. So I, I want to um, say to parents, you know, I think in some ways. Um, it's counterintuitive not to want to put kind of cozy, cozy things in, in, in a crib. I, I kind of get that, but here it is. The, uh, what, what we absolutely want to do is say that we want um, to, to make sure that babies are flat on solid cribs, not have any extraneous material in there at all. You don't want to put the baby bumpers. You don't want to put the uh, inclined sleepers in there. This is not safe for our children. And we know that there has been research that was done that found that um, many children have actually died because of those products. So with the help of the advocates and with the help of the Consumer Product Safety Commission, we're going to get those off the shelves, but we still have work to do to make sure that we communicate this to all families. And let's be clear, there are still some leftover things from younger children that you may have in the house, um, and uh, you want to make sure that those are discarded. You don't want to. Give them away. You don't want to have them uh, have them around. So I just want to urge everyone, especially in this holiday season, and when you're gift giving, you um, want to make sure that the things that you are giving to your children, to your grandchildren, to family, are safe. And you want to encourage everyone to purchase those things that are going to save the lives of uh, of so many children. Children. So I'm. So proud of the progress that we have made, the work that still is before us. We're going to continue to uh, to fight, and now it is my pleasure to uh, bring up my colleague, who is also working so hard to protect the lives of children, Congresswoman Robin Kelly. Good morning, and thank you, Jan, and for all that you do as chair of the Consumer Protection and Commerce Subcommittee. I have had the privilege and honor to serve on that committee for the past four years, and we've been able to achieve great, as my chairperson says, bipartisan wins under your leadership. Alex, it's great to see you here as a former Energy and Commerce staffer. I was so relieved once you were confirmed to be the chair of the Consumer Product Safety Commission and welcome back to Chicago. I was here at Lori's a few months ago with Trister Hamsmith. We were celebrating the passage of Reese's Law, which aims to prevent, as you've heard, the accidental ingestion of button or coin batteries named in honor of Trista's 18-month-old daughter, who tragically passed away after ingesting a button cell battery. Trista is a good, attentive parent and could not have guessed that Reese's coughing and crying was a result of a button battery being removed from a remote and ingested when Trista briefly stepped away. Damage from an ingested button battery can begin in as little as two hours. The electrical current from the battery results in severe electrical burns and the burns can continue to worsen after the battery is removed. Result, resulting in esophageal holes, long-term damage, and death. While the passage of Reese's Law will help make future products safer, parents and caregivers during the holiday season should be aware of the dangers that loose or easy, easily obtainable button batteries can cause young children if ingested. Many families staying at grandparents' home may be offered older products to help children sleep that we now know pose a danger. I'm a grandparent myself now, so I'm watching and learning. Padded crib bumpers can cause suffocation, strangulation, and entrapment. With 113 infant deaths linked to a padded crib bumper between 1990 and 2019, 
So make sure you double check that your products on subject to a recall or pose a danger to children. The CPSC has a great educational tool on their website where you can search by age and product type to see what items may pose danger. I want to thank you, Chair, for being here today and shining a light on these issues that too often go overlooked. I also want to thank Nancy, Tareen, Rachel, and Dr. Quinlan, my head's gone back and forth, for your tireless advocacy and work to protect children. I hope everyone has a happy and safe holiday. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Representative Kelly. It's great to stand here with so many advocates. At, and uh, as the chairman mentioned, this year has been extraordinary in our experience of 20 years working with CPSC in terms of the number of rules and new things that have gone into place. So we're thrilled to be here. My name is Nancy Coles. I'm the executive director of Kids in Danger. KID is a nonprofit dedicated to protecting children by fighting for product safety. Thank you, Chairman Honsarek, for coming to Chicago and inviting KID here. I'm thrilled to be joined by so many of you. We have advocated for safe sleep since our founding in 1998 by the parents of Danny Kayser, who died when a portable crib collapsed around his neck in his Chicago childcare home. Back then, there were no requirements that children's products be tested for safety before they were sold and very few safety standards. But now that has changed and infant sleep products are safer than ever, due in large part due to those who are here with me today and beginning with Danny's law, sponsored by Representative Schakowsky, first in 2001 uh, and passed as part of a larger product safety bill in 2008. Under those provisions, CPSC adopted the infant sleep product rule, which went into effect in June, as has been mentioned. The new rule mandates that all products marketed or intended for sleep must meet strong safety requirements. Just this week, as the chairman mentioned, it was cited to remove a dangerous product from the market, the Docatot lounger, following deaths and years of concern about its safety. Congress is also stepping up the Safe Sleep for Babies Act, which was enacted earlier this year and goes into effect, as we've said, two days from now, prohibit the manufacture or sale of padded crib bumpers and inclined sleep products. Both products have led to dozens of deaths. In celebrating the passage of this law, Kid in particular remembers baby like Preston, who suffocated against the bumper in his crib at just eight weeks old, and Alex, who died in an inclined sleep product. Congress also passed Reese's Law in August, sponsored by Representative Kelly. It will protect children from the very deadly hazard of button and coin cell battery ingestion. These policy actions would not have been possible without great leadership in Congress and the CPSC, as well as the work of parents, consumers, advocates, and the medical community. And just as we're talking about safety, especially for the holidays, just remember babies sleep safest on their back, on a firm, flat surface in a crib, bassinet, or play yard that meets a federal standard and has not been recalled, with only a fitted sheet. You can see our little kid baby over here in their safe crib. Other products such as bumper pads, pillows, blankets, or other infant products have no place in a safe sleep environment. Kids in Danger has materials we're, we're happy to share. This is our children's product safety guide that gives information on all kinds of different products and safety tips for children of all ages. And we also have a safe sleep checklist available in both English and Spanish that when you see a product, if you go through this checklist, you will know whether it is safe for sleep or not. So even before we get all those unsafe products off the market, you can use this um, as a guide. So again, Thank you um, so much. We look forward to continuing to work with everyone, and I will turn it over to Tareen. Good morning. I'd like to thank CPSC Chairman Alec Hohen Sarek, Congresswoman Jan Schakowsky, and Congresswoman Robin Kelly for including me and Safe Kids Worldwide in today's event. i also like to thank my colleagues here today, Dr. Matthew Davis and Patrick Magoon, and Amy Hill from Lurie Children's Hospital, Nancy Cowles from Kids in Danger, and Dr. Kyron Quinlan from the American Academy of Pediatrics, and Rachel Winthrop from the Commun Consumer Federation. Safe Kids values our partners, and we certainly appreciate everyone's efforts to make the world a safer place for our children. 
Safe Kids is a grassroots nonprofit organization working to help families and communities keep kids safe from preventable injuries. Most people are surprised to learn preventable injuries, things like fires, drownings, and car crashes are the number one killer of kids in the United States. And throughout the world, almost one million children die of an injury each year, and almost every one of these tragedies are preventable. As the Safe Kids president, I have worked to prioritize equity in children's safety. Our goal is to ensure that safety of all children. Part of our efforts include a focus on protecting kids in high risk and underserved communities. Just last month, I attended a car seat event here just up the road in Atasca with the American Academy of Pediatrics to provide children seats that most likely would not have one. Our work is to help high risk underserved kids and that's a big reason I'm so proud to be here today and to see this bill pass on going action on Saturday. Congresswoman Jan Schakowsky, Congresswoman Robin Kelly, and Chairman Alec hohen Sarek, we so appreciate your leadership and dedication to safety and to children's safety. You've been on the front lines in this work for many years, and I look forward to partnering with you with years to come. Safe Kids was pleased to work with all of you in support of numerous safety initiatives, we have really supported the Safe Sleek for Babies Act and banning crib bumpers. I've been with the organization for 23 years and I've been at this fight for 23 years. So to have you pass this is incredible. This is a huge victory for parents and Congresswoman Kelly, congratulations to you on the passage of Reese's Law. This legislation will protect kids from ingesting button cell batteries and we know we in harm's way come in this holiday season. So Safe Kids was proud to support both of these laws. Thank you to Chairman for making sure that consumers are aware of these issues and being a tireless advocate for children. I'm so happy that we acknowledge the Energy and Commerce Committee because you've done so much work there as well. Safe Kids is always pleased to partner with the CPSC to make sure that parents and guardians are up to date on the latest recalls and safety recommendations from your commission. I think that's an important message today to check for recalls. I think we don't understand that recalls are just as important and finally, I want to highlight one last issue. As part of the infrastructure law that was signed by President Biden last year, we work to include new programs aimed at ensuring kids from high risk and underserved communities have access to child passenger safety seats. That's very important that they're riding safe on the road. We also work to include funding to help ensure kids without a car seat will have one, as well as being the certifying body for all child passenger safety technicians. In closing, I want to thank this panel here today and encourage all of us to spread this awareness, spread the message. We can ensure that all children are protected from preventable injuries. Excellent. Chairman Honsarek, Representative Schakowsky and Kelly, fellow advocates, pediatricians, it is an honor to be here today with you to discuss the progress we have collectively made in keeping babies safe. Keeping babies safe for the holidays and every day is what unites us all here today. It's a priority for each of us and there has been amazing progress as a result of many years of advocacy by parents, pediatricians, fellow consumer advocates, members of Congress and the CPSC. This year, there is good news for parents, grandparents, and caregivers of babies. There is so much more we need to do, but we are building on an amazing foundation of success. The passage of the Safe Sleep for Babies Act by the House and Senate is profound. The Safe Sleep for Babies Act was signed into law on May 16th and goes into effect on Saturday. It prohibits the manufacture or sale of padded crib bumpers, crib bumper pads and infant inclined sleep products due the, to the leadership of Representative Cardenas, Representative Schakowsky, Senator Duckworth, and others, and years of advocacy by parents, pediatricians, and consumer advocates, this legislation is now law. And it is extraordinary, but we have so much work to do to make sure that these unsafe products get out of people's homes. What this law does is powerful for the marketplace, but we still have so much more work to do to educate consumers to make sure that these unsafe products are no longer in their homes. 
The CPSC's infant sleep product rule went into effect on June 23rd and establishes mandatory safety standards for product marketed or intended for infant sleep for babies up to five months of old, requiring that infant sleep products must be flat and must meet an existing strong mandatory standard for bassinets or cribs or play yards. This rule is incredibly vital to protecting babies and keeping them safe while they sleep. Reese's law became law on August 16th. The law will strengthen safety standards for coin and button cell batteries and the everyday products which contain them and which are in our homes. The bill was named in honor of Reese Hamsmith, an 18-month-old child who died after ingesting a button cell battery from a remote control. This bill became law because Reese's mother, Trista, led the advocacy efforts to protect other children from a similar tragedy and worked with members of Congress, including Representative Kelly and Chikowsky and pediatricians and consumer advocates. Her tragedy turned into advocacy and changed the law. Last week, the CPSC finalized two rules to address unsafe accessible cords in both stock and, window cover and custom window coverings. Both new rules address the risk of strangulation that can cause serious injury and death to children eight years old and younger posed by accessible cords of custom and stock window coverings. Hazardous corded window coverings create unsafe sleep and play environments for babies and children. For 20 years, parents who similarly to Trista became unwitting advocates after horrific tragedy. Like Linda Kaiser, who lost her daughter Cheyenne in 2002, Linda has worked tirelessly for a meaningful solution. We deeply appreciate the promulgation of the CPSC's critical safety rules and applaud the CPSC for effectively addressing these hazards. And again, now we need to work to make sure that hazardous blinds no longer exist in people's home and continue to pose that same strangulation risk. Last month, in addition, the CPSC issued a final rule addressing the stability of clothing storage units of furniture. Prior to this rule, there was no mandatory standard for dressers or other clothing storage units, despite at least 199 child deaths since 2000, and that's for sure an undercount. The CPSC's final rule is critically important. Too many children have died, and too many families have suffered tragic losses due to furniture tipovers. Their unimaginable losses and tireless advocacy have made this rule a reality, and the final rule will go into effect in 180 days from publication in the Federal Register. We have come together to mark amazing recent progress, building on years of advocacy after many tragedies. These new laws and rules will keep babies safe from hazards posed by what they sleep in, what is around them in their homes, button cell batteries, window coverings, and furniture. This is good news for American consumers and good news for keeping babies safe. And now, Dr. Kyron Quinlan, who has taught me so much over the years, it is an honor to introduce you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Rachel. <laughs> that was a bit much, but. Um, <laughs> Um, good morning, everyone. I'm Dr. Kyron Quinlan. I'm a pediatrician in Chicago here. I'm at Rush University Medical Center, not too far away, and I previously served as the chair of the American Academy of Pediatrics Council on Injury, Violence, and Poison Prevention Executive Committee. And I appreciate the opportunity to join with all our partners to recognize this historic uh, moment, uh, the Safe Sleep for Babies Act, and it's taking effect. I'm very honored to be with the CPSC Chairman, Hohen Sark, and Representative Schakowsky and Kelly, um, and they've been instrumental in this progress and leaders in this work. Um, pediatricians have long emphasized the importance and the science um, about safe sleep, that infants should always sleep on their back, you've heard this, on, separate, on a separate flat and firm surface without any bumpers or soft bedding. Um, and the Back to Sleep campaign of the 1990s made major progress in reducing sleep-related infant deaths. But that progress has stalled. Last year, about the same number of babies died in sleep-related infant deaths 
as died about 20 years ago. These deaths are very tragic, but many of them are sadly also preventable. Here in Cook County, another sudden unexpected infant death happens about once a week. I want to let that sink in. About once a week, another sudden unexpected, unexpected infant death happens. These are children who die unexpectedly. These are children who are not supposed to die. You never hear about these cases. They never make the news. But each one is a tragedy. I have seen the grief of sleep-related infant death firsthand in my own practice. I've talked with the mom who woke up to find her baby lifeless beside her in bed. Unimaginable pain that no parent should ever experience. These deaths disproportionately affect African American infants in Cook County um, and nationally. Nationally, the black to white ratio is two to one. In Cook County, unfortunately, that ratio is 16 to one. So the legislation we're talking about here today is deeply important. The Safe Sleep for Babies Act was endorsed by the American Academy of Pediatrics and is a remarkable bipartisan public health victory that will keep infants safe by banning padded crib bumpers and inclined sleepers. We thank Chairman Hohensarek and the CPSC for their leadership on this issue and look forward to the, their vigorous enforcement of this important law. While I'm grateful to celebrate this progress, I also recognize the responsibility that we all have um, to ensure that safe sleep for babies is a reality. As we enter into a busy but hopefully joyful holiday season, I want to leave everyone with four main tips to keep your baby safe. First, always put your baby on their back whenever they are sleeping. Second, use a firm, flat surface like a crib, a bassinet, or a play yard. Never an adult bed. Third, never sleep with your baby. And fourth, keep all soft objects and loose bedding out of your baby's sleep area. These tips are important every time your baby sleeps, whether it be during naps, when you put them to bed, or after nighttime feedings. Working together, we can continue the critical progress that is the Safe Sleep for Babies Act and protect so many more families from unnecessary heartbreak. Thank you. Well, thank you everyone for being here this morning. It's been such a pleasure to join you all in celebrating these successes and planning for our next steps. What you've heard this morning is a great example of how advocates and family members and lawmakers and government agencies and professional organizations and researchers and healthcare organizations can come together to safeguard children's lives. We're celebrating success today and yet we all recognize that this is just the next milestone in what is our journey to get to successful impact. We need to change the outcomes that Dr. Quinlan just shared with us. We need to change them here in Cook County. We need to change them across the country. We are so grateful for the leadership of Representative Schakowsky and Representative Kelly. And I am personally grateful here at Lurie Children's to have such fantastic partners as nonprofit organizations and as parents and as community members, we will all ensure the safe sleep for children around us and in communities across the country. I'll now ask Chair Hohen Sark to close us out for this morning, and then we'll take questions from the group. Thank you, Dr. Davies, and thank you to Lurie's Children's Hospital for hosting us today. It is such a wonderful venue. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Dr. Quinlan, for the, the advice that you're giving, the important tips that you're telling for parents. Um, we at CPSC provide the same information. Ours is based off of science. It's really based off the pediatricians and what pediatricians have been saying for years. One more I'd add on, on top of that is, as everyone knows, babies can sleep anywhere. And if they fall asleep somewhere that's not a safe surface, I know that it's not the natural reaction of parents, but really it's important to move them to a safe sleep area as well. So if they fall asleep on a rocker or a crib or on your couch, 
moving them over to a safe, flat surface without any blankets or pillows around it is really important. So thank you again to everybody for all the work over the years to move forward. And as I said, this is a good step, but it's only one step in the process. Um, really appreciate everybody's work and joining me here today. And as uh, Dr. Davis says, I believe we have time for a few questions. Um, if you can recognize yourself and the outlet that you work for, and then we will try and answer. Oh, we went here. So, Dr. Quinlan, would you like to? Yeah, sure. Well, thank you for the question. I think, um, you know, there are ways to have a baby stay safe, even though it's getting cold out here in Chicago. Um, obviously, the ambient temperature in the room, if that's possible, to keep sort of something close to comfortable would be first. Um, but second, having the baby in a sleep sack would be a wonderful answer to this. So that it is, it is um, sort of a zip up onesie thing that is kind of keeps both legs in one little snuggly area and the baby's warmth kind of like stays with the baby and it keeps the baby nice and warm, but there's no, nothing that can come loose. It doesn't come loose and could somehow tangle with the baby or the baby's face could get planted into it. So I think a sleep sack would be the second way I would suggest. Other questions? If not, I would just say thanks again to everybody here, and thanks again to everybody for showing up and attending. Um, it's a really important message to get out to folks, uh, especially as we're entering into the holiday season. So thank you all. Thank you.